Let us pray. Almighty God, through the ages you have moved your people to build houses of prayer and praise and to set apart places for the ministry of the gospel and sacraments with gratitude to our forebears who built Trinity Episcopal Cathedral and the Diocese of Nebraska Clarkson Center for Sacred Use, we are now gathered to discern our stewardship of this legacy by a renewal of these spaces. Grant us, O oh God, your blessing, inspiring us by Christ's courage to follow the leading of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here, everyone. Um, a few weeks ago, I in the chapter sent out a letter describing uh, where, where we thought we were headed with the Cathedral Commons um, project. And that came after a lot of conversations. And the feedback that we got is, wait a minute, we don't know where we're going. So the chapter and I uh, apologize for running a little bit farther ahead. And we wanted to make sure we met with our architect and um, the, the other expert team that, that has been in existence, uh, let you know where we have been, and uh, make sure we get your feedback on where we're going, um, the ministries that are ahead of us. This is an opening meeting um, to get some of that background. We'll be having a small feedback meetings in between that small group, and you'll be able to sign up for those after this meeting is over. And then if you're watching online, we'll open that up online to sign up later on in the week. Um, before we add more dates, uh, we'll fill up the, I believe there are nine, there's at least eight dates that are available in the next uh, month. The final meeting, or the follow-up meeting to this will be September 18th. So please mark that on your calendars. So first, I'd like to introduce uh, the folks who are helping me out this morning. Um, up first is going to be Bill Stott, who you will see in just a moment. Uh, Bill has been working on Cathedral Commons project since they called an architect, and I'm very grateful uh, for architectural offices, AO, his firm. Uh, Bill is a principal architect there and a fantastic partner in understanding this and understanding how you build um, how you build buildings for people first. Thank you. Uh, next, a new parishioner, Shannon Snow. Shannon, if you don't mind standing up and waving. Uh, Shannon is a great gift uh, to me and to this parish. She joined us during the pandemic, so you may not know her. Uh, but Shannon is a capital facilities planner. Right now, she's the executive director of the Land Bank here in Omaha. But in the past, she has worked at uh, Metro Community College, the Ford Omaha campus, as well as Collective for Hope and Kids Can Community Center. And she really um, helps match mission to building, make sure that uh, the form meets the function for which it's going to be used. So again, a great um, outside voice and fresh set of eyes for me and for the chapter to continue this project. Um, and finally, uh, we have two senior wardens uh, to, to, um, uh, to help us out this morning. Our former senior warden who saw you through probably one of the hardest year and a half of Trinity Parish and probably one of the hardest 24 months of your life. Um, with joy, with joy. So you know Char DeWitt and she's here to help, uh, help us answer any questions or clarify where we've been. And uh, Norm Melikar, many of us uh, know Norm already. He's our current senior warden, um, a good friend, a good um, leader here, and again has been part of designing this project and part of leading this project for, for many years. Uh, Norm is also an educator, so he understands um, the call that I was talking about this morning that has clear uh, development from our community uh, as an educator and an art artist and a teacher, uh, Norm's perspective has been invaluable to me. So, with all, and I'm Dean Vanessa Clark, <laughs> just in case. Uh, I'm the Dean and Rector here and blessed to be so. Um, so get, to get us uh, kicked off, I'd like to invite Bill. Uh, I, have you, I have you formally announced as William, but uh, I think Bill's okay. Yep. All right, yes. thanks a lot. And I'm going to get food. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. So I am in. I have been given the charge of. of giving a quick overview of how we got to where we are today and what was involved in that project uh, that we're working on, the one that, that, is in, that we finished in 2021. So uh, we, were, we got involved, um, gosh, several years ago, 2017, I think, and uh, we were charged with um, completing the, the goals that had come out of the, the uh, Cathedral Commons uh, effort that was put forth by the church. So one of the goals when we started, we had a couple of overarching goals and it's, it's important to look back and remember those because people, people often associate themselves with certain things in plans just like they do in cars um, and books. They don't really think about the overall. So uh, I wanted to reiterate some of the main focuses because I'm not sure that they're the ones that you think of when you think of what we've done so far. But the first and primary goal that we were charged with was to figure out a way to create the entire um, building uh, with an accessible path to all spaces. Um, so you didn't have to go, if you were, if you were in a wheelchair or, um, or injured or elderly uh, and difficulty getting around, you didn't have to go outside and then walk up the street and come in a different doorway. Um, when we, um, this is a really, uh, I'm gonna tell you something you may not realize, this is a very complicated building. Uh, it's just, it's literally complicated just trying to figure out uh, what floor you're on because everyone calls, everyone calls different floors different names. Um, so, um, but the overarching uh, goal of everything was that we had to make all the spaces uh, accessible. So, uh, when someone came into the facility, they came into the cathedral, they could come uh, and have a fellowship and a meal afterwards, they could have coffee, uh, if they were here for a funeral, no one, no one had to be um, facing barriers within the building. And every time we looked at an alternate or a, a, an idea or um, a mission, it all had to, it all had to work uh, from an accessibility standpoint. Uh, the second thing that we were charged with, and these are, at, beyond that, they're really not in any particular order, but all important. Well, we were charged with, with creating a more, um, more of a presence for the cathedral in the area. And that meant a presence um, for people looking inside or outside in and also inside out to, to facilitate the ability for you to, uh, to, to do your mission and uh, your programs more easily in the city, but also uh, to, to kind of create a, a scenario where people became aware of Trinity. Uh, there was a concern at that point that it was uh, the best kept secret downtown and wanted to, to end that. And part of that was, uh, was to create a front door to the building. That was also a very significant um, problem that we faced on 18th Street. There are so many doors to the building, so many ways to get in. Um, and no matter way, where you come in, you're still forced with stairs to get to someplace else. So one of the things that we were charged with was to create some type of a front door, an obvious um, way to get into the building. I'm, I'm not a big fan of signage. I think I have a, a saying in the office uh, whenever one of my employees says, well, we can always put a sign that says the door's over here. And I say, if you need a sign to, to show where the front door is, then you've, you have not, you've not done your job, you've failed. So that was pretty important. So we're gonna move on now to these plans. Now, before we do that, I do wanna recognize that in my, in my um, number of years, at this profession, I found that the majority of people have a really difficult time reading architectural plans. And I say that because some of you may be looking at these plans and you may be completely mystified at what you're looking at and that's okay. Um, it's not, it, it, you're probably in the majority, not the minority. But I'm gonna try to walk you through them so if, if you don't understand, feel free to contact me later and I'll try to, I'll try to walk you into it uh, best I can. But the first thing we're going to do, uh, this first plan is what we're calling the lower level. What we call the lower level, um, it's, the, it's the level below the cathedral itself. Um, yes, this level, uh, as opposed to the first level. So we're calling this the lower level. Um, and one of the things, and I'm just going to walk you through what we did. So uh, this level was primarily uh, to be the, the functions that supported 
the church services and, and the church functions. So we were going to move the, the choir room down here, the robing room, the uh, uh, support spaces, meeting areas, small practice rooms, things like that. We were going to renovate um, the existing restrooms down here uh, to make them a little bit better, a little bit more welcoming to those that were coming to work at the service. But for the most part, the, the functions down here were support spaces. All right, now flip one page. And the first level, what I'm calling the first level, which is the level directly above us, um, it's roughly the same level, obviously, as, as the cathedral as well, even though they're not on the same level. And uh, the same lowest level of the, uh, the Clarkson building, which is also not on the same level. But, um, <laughs> but one of the things that we wanted to do was to move this function up to the floor above us, immediately above. Build a brand new kitchen, uh, a new fellowship hall, gathering space, um, with uh, the support functions that help that, you know, pantry. We also wanted the, uh, an enlarged and uh, a better nursery facility so that it was closer to the cathedral so people would be able to bring in young children if there was an issue during the service. Um, and some just general meeting rooms. Um, the reason for this, that wasn't the driver for this, but one of the reasons we wanted to do that was because we felt that it would create a sense of, uh, I use the term street theater a lot, so uh, activity at the street level. You've got those windows facing west and a sidewalk facing west. So instead of a space that rarely had people in it, it often had large groups of people and activated the space and activated the church and activated the street. Uh, that was one of the reasons that we put that up there. That's not a primary focus. I mean, there's lots of places. There's no reason it can't be down here. But we thought it would be great to have that on that level um, because we're also thinking at that point that there really wasn't any place to have, uh, for, for large groups to have events uh, outside of the church. Uh, that's changed now with Hotel Indigo across the street. But the thought was that this would be a, an opportunity for you to open up the facility to people outside the church um, and encourage interaction, possibly membership, but also as it activate the space and, and the facility. Um, it, it required a fair amount of demolition and a fair amount of modification of that, those floors. Um, the other things that we did to create accessibility, um, it was really difficult to figure out how to get someone from all three of those levels in a wheelchair, on a walker, on crutches. We always think about accessibility as, as, a, as a person that is disabled in a wheelchair and, and we've all had crutches at some point, broken a toe or broken a foot, and you realize that it affects the, uh, the vast majority of us at some point in our life. So we, um, we figured out a way to use uh, Pigeon Alley, um, I still love that term, uh, Pigeon Alley as a ramp space that went from the, the vestibule adjacent to the cathedral up to that level directly above us. It's maybe not the most efficient, it certainly wasn't the cheapest way to do that, um, but it did create a way for people to get from that level, uh, from the cathedral to here. And then of course we ended up placing another ramp um, from the, the building to the south, the Clarkson, uh, to the parish house level. So there's a lot of ramps, but they were all, they were all accessible um, slopes, so they weren't terribly difficult to get around. Um, but that, that required that we remove those existing restrooms and kitchen from the Clarkson building. Um, the, the secondary effect that we got of that was that the space in the Clarkson uh, became really the obvious front door for the facility. We had a nice little area there that we could create for an entryway, a sense of entry. If someone was coming in, there was a, a space with some chairs. We were going to put a fireplace in, a uh, really welcoming environment but it also had the effect of working really well for a small little coffee area after church service. Um, not everyone likes to be in a large room, so after church um, or after, after the service, this gave people that were maybe a little bit more, um, um, uh, less, um, that's what I'm looking for, um, a little introverted, a place where couples could go up there or people could go, and they weren't in the mix of, of, of all this sea of chairs. Uh, we've probably all sat down in a large room with a bunch of tables and only had a couple people there and it can feel a little bit odd. So it, it gave that space uh, meaning. Uh, then on the floor above, really, um, the only thing we were doing up there is we were converting the existing restrooms which were not ADA accessible 
uh, to two ADA accessible restrooms and a family restroom. Family restroom is, is uh, intended for an adult with a small child. So we, that, that actually served the Sunday school program. The intent was that it was a place where uh, kids could go to the restroom, uh, Sunday school teachers could go to the restroom, but it was all ADA accessible. And that was primarily the only thing that we did there. Um, any questions on kind of just bringing everyone up to speed on that? Um, what's my next thing? So um, the problem was that it still came in quite expensive. It was a lot of work. We were focusing on a, a lot of parts of the church. And then the thing that we didn't really anticipate as we moved in was that, um, again, this is probably, this may be a surprise actually to many of you, is the utilities in this building are a mess. Um, <laughs> so um, one of the things that we were going to do is we were going to renovate, completely renovate the existing restroom, or I'm sorry, the existing elevator, uh, so that it went uh, all floors of this building and placed a large ramp down the hallway there. So that in effect would give someone the ability to, to function and get around in this entire building uh, in a wheelchair with a walker. Um, but again, that completely obliterated most of this work. We also found out that the, uh, the, the services from the, the heat and, and chilled water services from the downtown um, um, energy uh, program come into a couple different places in the building and that doesn't actually make code anymore. And we had some issues with water getting out, uh, some, uh, some flooding, which uh, after we finished this came, came to be a problem. So there was a fair amount, there was an unexpectedly high number uh, associated with kind of bringing the equipment online. Most of the, the mechanical equipment is well, well beyond its uh, expected life. Um, and we had to bring a number of things up to code, which uh, created some unexpected problems. So, in a nutshell, the problem, the project came in um, higher than we had anticipated, um, and I think that's where we are right now. So we are looking at alternatives. We're we're we are hoping to look for alternatives. I'm, I'm hoping that I will be able to help you as we move forward. Um, but uh, looking at different alternates that still give you all of those core things that you want, uh, accessibility, uh, presence, front door, uh, upgraded mechanical electrical systems, um, but, but possibly a different way of, of, of solving those. So not that, not that any of these are bad or the right way or the wrong way, there's always multiple ways to solve any problem. So uh, we're gonna try to look at this with fresh eyes uh, get some input from you, what, what works, what doesn't work, and uh, move into this next phase. So. I think that's great. Does anyone have questions? Hi. Um, if this were to be approved today, how long do you think it would take to complete this renovation? How disruptive would it be of our weekly activities? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would say, um, I, uh, I'm trying to remember, I should know this. We had a time frame. I want to say it was about 14 months construction. Um, obviously, if everyone moved out um, to someplace else, we could we could accomplish it pretty quickly. But we were working with um, a contractor, and it was about it was about 14 months to get through the whole thing. Um, what was the second part of that question? I'm sorry. Uh, that answers the next thing. Um, uh, oh, and uh, oh, it was disruption. Um, Yes, it would be very disruptive. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, basically, you don't have this space for a while. Uh, I think the plan was we uh, a decision was made to to work with a general contractor in town, Boyd Jones, and they they dynamically priced us through uh, this whole process as we as we move forward as plans became more concrete or more um, more solid. They were able to revise numbers kind of dynamically, and they also figured out ways to allow the, the, the church to still work. Um, we really, very, no work in the cathedral at all. Um, and we did have areas that we would be able to phase and finish first. I think uh, the first thing that they were gonna do is work on the space above so that this function and all these could move up before this area was, was being um, renovated. It was probably a longer answer than you wanted, sorry. That was great, thanks. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes? If we were to, uh, if we were to do this plan, they, do you have an estimate of what the cost would be? Um, I, no, I, the short answer is no. I think that 
you know what's happened with gas and bread and milk over the last year and and the construction industry has been hit even worse than that and um, I, I more than what we originally had it certainly would be a higher number I wouldn't be surprised if it's you know 10 to 15 to 20 percent higher than it was yes for us who are new here what's the baseline that we're starting at that you're adding a percentage to it seems to me I'm trying to remember so um, I think they are I'm going to ask you to use the microphone so they can hear it in the camera too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. When we began, so at the phase that he is speaking about, the very, very beginning phase, we came, that came in at just, um, well, let me give you one disclaimer. We did not get all of those materials in place first before we started fundraising. We needed to get the fundraising going. And we got bids as we came al as we went along with the vision, and so uh, we knew that we we probably needed about three to three three million to three point one million, and um, and so we raised a little over two point two. So we always knew that we were about a million dollars short all along. Um, so I would say that you know, and that's on the original the original original. So. Which was in 2017. Exactly. No, no. When was no, no, no. Well, the fundraising was 2018, when I think. When it was done, when we had okay. 2020. 2.2 million. Well, we did a second, we did, so we did, when it was finished, it was 2020, because we did two rounds of fundraising. So uh, we reached the 2.2 after the second fundraising. Okay. Mm -hmm. Charles? Yes. With that three million estimate, was a pared down vision or of what originally was envisioned, is that correct? There was, so we received the, the, the knowledge that we had a, a gap of about a million dollars. And this is why we initiated for two things. We initiated the second phase of fundraising and did not close that gap. Uh, the second is is that when we were price, we were uh, looking at taking things out, and as a chapter and as you know, uh, various committees and what have you. But in some of the discussions, the reality was was that the infrastructure that Bill is talking about was the looming. <laughs> issue that those all of our structures had to be addressed along with the, the the building because you know we had to do the infrastructure in order for the the, the rest of the project to uh, be okay right to be to be completed so at one point so I'll just be frank here, and please anyone, Brent and anyone else, jump in if I'm, if I'm incorrect on this. But just when we were at the point where um, Father Loya was leaving, we have, you know, and then we were headed into COVID, at that point, we were all looking at the, fa we were looking at the fact that um, the, the money that we had raised, about 75% of it, needed to be infrastructure. So we were still facing quite a bit of gap just to even get some of the basics done on the project. So this is why we, among other things, among other, there were several other reasons, but we took a pause in this because we just knew that there was just no way to address it once COVID began to hit. And we were without a dean. We had great leadership, but we still knew that we were in a, in a flux. So, so if that maybe helps put some uh, context to that, does that help? Allie, what do you think? Does, am I on? I'm on? <laughs> okay. 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 All right, with that, I'll be around. So if you have, oh, yes, question? So just to, just to clarify, because I'm new here, uh, these, are the, these are the plans 
that were developed. But based on the realities of what you discovered in, throughout this process, you've determined that we need new plans, correct? You're going to try to accomplish these same goals in a different way. Is yes. Is that correct? I think, I think um, in my experience, it's relatively easy to shave um, relatively small amounts of money off of a project. I, my rule of thumb is you can usually save about 5% of the cost of construction without, without realizing a noticeable change. Um, sometimes you can get to 10%, um, but, but when you start to approach that, the only way to really do it is to take a knife to the project and, and, and reduce the scope. You have to not do part of it. And one of the problems we have in this scheme I don't like to refer to my work as problems, but um, one, of the, one of the issues that we have is everything is so interconnected that uh, in cutting part of it away, um, you left a gap in something else. There was, it's not like the shifting cards around on a table. So um, at, in some way, to reduce the, the, the numbers in a dramatic way, it's going to take a, a different approach. Um, I still think that all of the goals that you want to accomplish are are easily attainable, but it, it probably won't look like this, if that makes sense. Yes? So, so I, if I understand what Char said and what you said, I gather that to, I mean, to me, this is the crucial stuff. The electric, the uh, HVAC, the um, bathrooms, the, uh, I hate to say it, but the kitchen. So are, are we looking at 1.5 million just to do those very basic things? And, and the sewer, are we looking at 1.5 million just to, to do that before we do anything cosmetic? Is that basically what? Yeah, I, I don't know that I, I'm really in a position well, to Well, Char said 75%. Yeah, it, it, so, um, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to do this the right way. So the, the question being that would the in, is the infrastructure that we're looking at right now at, at 75%, it's about 1.5 million then. Um, it was at the time in 2019, uh, we were, I think that we were getting feedback, and I don't know that it was you, but feedback uh, of about $930,000 at that time. And that included the kitchen? Well, um, it included putting in a kitchen upstairs, but you'll hear a little bit more about that. Um, it was because this was going to be removed. Well, that's what I mean. That's uh -huh. what we gotta have a kitchen. So uh -huh. Exactly. It doesn't matter where yeah. it is. Yep. And it was also, I mean, I mean, there's just so many hidden things that Vern, or Krenzer, our junior warden, deals with that, I mean, he could tell you, you know, all of the things that need to be done in order for it to support all of the things that we want to do. And, and then related to that, so the windows that we put in, does that come out of the, the money that has... No, 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 we have progressed with a number of items that has come out of the budget, uh, our yearly budget. And so nothing has come out of the, the fund except for just some of the fees that we've had, uh, you know, with, with the original plans, et cetera. But, uh, but nothing has come out. Those have been paid for. Mm -hmm. And the the uh, the courtyard and all of that work that has been done that's been out of the um, out of the budget. Operating. Operating, but it's yes. Sure. Yes. And because we were able to replace the windows out of the operating budget, that's a savings to the capital. Yep. Budget. Mm -hmm. Because that was originally part of what they were going to do. It was. Uh huh. So the the windows and and the infrastructure issues that we had on the courtyard, that's all been addressed and is not needed to be part of the uh, funding for this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask how much money of the budget has been spent. We've had two architecture firms and a professional fundraising. How much of that has been developed? Brett might be able to ask to that clear, more clearly. Yeah, restate the question. So the, hey, Brent Meyer, the treasurer. Uh, the question is how much uh, expenses that we incurred for the Cathedral Commons project. Uh, we spent about $300,000. Uh, 160 of that went to the architectural firm. 
and about 120 went to Steyer Group, which was the capital uh, consultant that we retained. Well, we're assuming you're abandoning those plans that have already, we've already spent $300,000 on. Well, the Steyer Group was just capital finance consultant. Um, I don't think we're completely abandoning all the services we provided. I think we'll, yeah. We're not starting completely anew. Okay. okay, I'd like for Norm and uh, Shannon to come on up. We're going to have a little more conversation about where we are now. So the plans are important. There's been, um, we wanted you to, to have a, a, uh, an idea of, of where we were. These, these plans were published. There's a date on it that says 2020. That, um, and I just, the last number that I was given, so the 2021 meetings, uh, when Father Stephen was here and leading the chapter uh, with, with great pressure around them and, and having an exciting, interesting profile that I had hot competition. I mean, I had hard competition to become your dean. And I am um, uh, grateful to the Holy Spirit for all the movements and um, and equipping me to walk into this ministry, uh, but I have to tell you that um, I looked at um, I looked at a lot, and there were a lot of uh, great places out there. And um, when someone sent me your profile and what you needed, um, it was like. Um, just a, literally a light went off and I, I was talking to, to folks there were two opportunities that I had in um, July to respond to and um, when I was talking to someone about one of those great weighty important um, opportunities this is an equally important opportunity um, I thought about my duty and my uh, what I should give to the church and it was going to be hard work that I was able to do and then I would talk to my uh, spiritual director about uh, this place and they said to me okay you're talking about hard work and then you're talking about joy <laughs> and Vanessa it's okay to choose joy <laughs> and you did that through some very, very difficult times. So I don't, want to, I don't want us to let go of the fact that we have exciting goals that we're still reaching towards and that we have a great deal of joy to be had and to roll out in that. But we also have to face that there's some really important things that have changed. Uh, Norm has been here through all of that and so is going to um, uh, start taking some ideas to remember what has changed in the meantime. We have, uh, the chapter has already, um, we're not changing who our team is. So um, the architects have been, um, Bill as well as Brian, um, have been right there beside us, have uh, been consulting with us, giving ideas, here's where we are, don't forget the infrastructure. Um, we are choosing to retain Boyd Jones. Uh, it's premature to reach out to them yet. But the advantage of that is all of those plans, all of the research, all of the tracking, all of the elevations of our, our electrical spaghetti and uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, cooling, the cooling system and heat system, um, all of that is already there. So the, the really uninteresting to us, um, detailed specific work that they've already done, Morrissey engineering and so forth, all of that we get to keep and be part of continuing this journey. Um, so it's not wasted at all. Um, Norm, I wanted you to come on up and help us think about what's changed. Do you want to start or would you like me to start? <laughs> what's changed? What's changed? <laughs> I think one of the things we need to talk most about, or at least in my mind, is the flood. Um, for those people that aren't aware of what happened during the tremendous rainstorm, um, this entire level was flooded. And what you might not know is that these center row of tables are seated above the main line sewer. And those two pillars over there 
pipe the drains from Pigeon Alley that take all the water from the south side of the cathedral into this sewer line. And this podium is about the location of where the pump is that provides, up to this point, not a secure way <laughs> of keeping the water in or out because we are below street grade. And so when the street sewer fills up, it wants to come here. And when our roof is draining, it wants to go there. And only one gets to win. <laughs> so all of those things have to be fixed before we can proceed with any other renovations. And I want you to imagine if the ramp had been built next to the cathedral over Pigeon Alley during a torrential rain, where would that water go? <laughs> there was not an answer to that. Where would the water go? It comes off the south side of the cathedral. It's supposed to come down those two drains which are going to be covered up. Where would the water go? It would, it would find every nook and cranny it could get into. So that is something that we have to consider that's changed from the beginning conception to now. We have to address that water issue. Well, I guess we could call that the gift of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah. Yeah. If, it's not like we didn't know that, but we acted like we didn't believe it. <laughs> so now we know. Now we know. And if we had had our grand pianos downstairs and all of the music robes and all of those things had moved down here, we would have been looking at a much different insurance settlement than what we did this time. And I've been here through all the various floods we've had. This was the worst because it's never gone to the clergy sacristy. It's never gone into the common barrier before. This time, all over. And Dean, was it stinky? <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was odiferous, that is absolutely true. <laughs> it wasn't a room I was not expecting. <laughs> it was an incident. Norm. Norm. Yes. All these changes, for instance. Well, the, way, the federal government has mandated the city to do something. Right. And your question is, what is the city what going to do that they do? act up? Because and I watched them separate. The, the, an place. the answer is Morrissey, who is the main contractor that would deal with the plumbing, is also in contact or would be in contact with the city to develop a plan that was immutable to both of us. So there was no plan Correct. until the big rain? Well, Correct. Um, so the, the question um, came up about another thing that has changed in our neighborhood, because our neighborhood has changed. What's around us has definitely changed. Uh, you already mentioned the Hotel Indigo about, or uh, Bill did. Um, about what is needed in the neighborhood has changed. Um, so there's a venue across the street with a restaurant and wonderful catering already. So the idea of using our space for a venue um, and a commercial kitchen is not as necessary in the neighborhood. Just recently, Mary Kerr sent me the um, article. Across the street where the Civic Center was, they're going to do um, um, housing. It's a housing development. And it's a mix, economic mix of housing development. Um, condos, I believe, I don't remember the specificity, specificity. Um, but there are going to be uh, both low income and um, uh, higher income. So it's gonna be mixed, which is fantastic for Trinity, our ministries, our worship. It's absolutely something to be welcomed. And, Teresa, it is going to be an even greater strain on the infrastructure, which the city of Omaha 
at least as far as we know, um, has no plan to address yeah. yet, but we're not privy to that. So all we can do is control what's inside our building, which is why AO and Morrissey and Boy Jones, all the information they already have is so valuable to us going forward. And Vern is nodding at me, so I'm getting this correct? Pretty much? Pretty much. Pretty much. If you need details, uh, Mr. Krenzer is the Molly. Do you know which state councilman is attached to this address? Um, your district three, so probably city. 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 Bakery. Yeah. You would know. Do you want? <laughs> yeah. Don't quote me on this, but I think we're in City Council District 3, which is Councilman Danny Bailey. Pretty sure. So. Okay, I'm coming back to you. What else has changed from beginning to now? Well, we have a new dean. <laughs> we do. Yeah. And we're thankful for that. <laughs> COVID changed so much. When we started taking services online, uh, we were using somebody's cell phone <laughs> and trying to broadcast a quality service to people online. Not using capital campaign monies. <laughs> you now have a state-of-the-art video and sound system that have both been replaced. Came out of the operating budget. And it's something we will have for a long time and it's something that's a really good thing. We have people every week online watching our services from across the country. And the world. And the world. And the world. Another thing about COVID that we've all learned is space usage. In, in COVID, we need bigger spaces where when we need to separate, we can, as well as smaller spaces when things are not as precarious as COVID, we can be closer together. Clarkson Center can provide us with some great smaller spaces but this room is the biggest space we have. Um, it may be prudent to consider keeping this as our meeting hall, our social hall. It's something we have to consider. Out of curiosity, how many people can fit in here? How many tables are there? I don't know the capacity. 15 tables today. Huh? There are 15 tables today. I Fifteen times eight, 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 when Fisher Curry was here, oh, Fisher when, Curry. when the news when he started the homeless lunch program, when the news company came oh, came in here on Thanksgiving, this place was jam packed. Anything else? How about our kitchen situation? I want you. I want you to it's keep in mind. Better than I am. We don't set anything on fire that's not supposed to be on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Even the acolytes know that. <laughs> Even though this kitchen is older than Moses, it still has exhaust systems, plumbing systems, and gas systems that you need for a kitchen already there. Don't have to be moved. And it's a commercial grade kitchen. It's a commercial kitchen. Yes. It is a commercial kitchen. Yep. So it could be updated. It could be totally updated. Something that is more workable. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is something to consider. If you want to move the kitchen upstairs, 
which can be considered, but you also have to consider moving gas lines, moving water lines, moving sewer lines. And ducks. And ducks. So I'm not saying anything's off the table, but it's something that we have to talk about. What's the most prudent thing for us and our facility and our budget? And that's what the feedback groups will provide for us? Absolutely. Yeah. We want you to talk about these things. Yes, sir. Another change is our ministries are changing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Tell us about it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we have an agenda item for that. So. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Ministries <laughs> change. <laughs> you may have gotten a hint from the sermon today, which I thought was brilliant. Anything else you'd like to talk about that has changed? Yes, ma'am. Um, with COVID, we need spaces that can be hybrid for technology. If we're going to do Zoom classes or meetings from the cathedral. Yes. Looking at you, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, the last thing is I think all of us have changed one way or another through COVID, through people we've known, through our church, through where we work. It has changed the way we live and think and act. And that's going to affect what we do here, how we act and, and use space. It, it is going to change us and it. Yes, ma'am. I don't want to be a deep downer, but it's also changed our finances. Totally Absolutely. Changed, radically changed. And people have died that were contributing, I'm sure, to the campaign. People have lost their jobs and had to take lower paying jobs. So that has changed also. It has. Although it's Shannon. Hold on one second. I think we'll move to the next item. Absolutely. Thank you, Nora. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, <laughs> so I'm the newbie here, but I'm going to just close out some norm section of this with some observations that I have. Closer to um, the mic. Oh, sorry. I am not loud, and I don't do mics. So. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Shannon, I am a facilities planner, and I want to leave you with one final thought from this section. Um, I am new to the parish. I joined during COVID. I've really been present physically in about, for about the last year. Um, I've worked on a lot of projects where there's not a clear vision. And my perception from this parish, from Trinity, is that there is a very clear vision on where you're going, where you want to be. Everybody I talk to articulates the missions and our priorities. Even when we met with Bill, um, I wasn't here during 2017, but the, the goals that he articulated all the way, all the way back then, but before all this change are clear and consistent. So I feel like we are to going through this process um, it's a little bit uneasy, right? We don't know what the future plans are going to be, but I want you all to know that I hear consistency where you want to be and take that with you as you think about this. I think we're on the right track, so that's all I have for you. Thank you so much, Norm. Thank you, Char. Um, it's, it's, Part of the fun that I'm having here is this. <laughs> I am not, I am in no way afraid or feel daunted or feel uh, down about facing this change together because we have, we have each other to go forward. And I will tell you that the pledges that were made are, are completed um, without a stone being removed. Um, the faithfulness of people who believe in this project, whatever, the, it's the basic goals. 
You are together, you are generous, you are committed, you are <laughs> present to one another. So we're churning up, I know, and there's anxiety, I know, and we're all looking at change, which can be very scary. But I love change. <laughs> because you can either choose it and respond, or it will happen to you and you react. No one wants to be over here because you make bad decisions. Can I say an amen from the psychologist in the room? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> When you're over here, you get to make choices and decisions. And as a body, as the body of Christ and as Trinity, we make decisions through discernment and together, and that is what we are doing. And I am very excited, and I can't wait for those small groups um, to come together and let's talk about it and let's walk in the space and let's imagine what's coming next. So there is good news. <laughs> Not just the gospel, I promise Jesus is coming. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon, but we gotta take care of business until he does. Um, so some of the good news, you've already stolen my thunder, is uh, we've paid for um, uh, over $100,000 worth of new windows. Paid for, not in the project. We've restored, um, uh, repaired and restored all of the courtyard, um, the outside um, wall, We've restored it using um, almost all of the original building material in a very creative, efficient way. Um, we're restoring the courtyard to be using native plants, which are sustainable, which are green, I mean, environmentally correct and so forth, and won't overtake the, the uh, sidewalk paid for, has nothing to do with the funds. And the cool thing about that is we can now see that uh, wall again, which will become part of what AO had already presented to us in terms of an outside integration of our visual um, building. So we have that, that presence on 18 and all three buildings tied together. That's already paid for, we can use it now. The fountain is going, it's a great place to sit and contemplate and meet those teenagers who were walking by um, and say hi and say, hey, would you like to come and sit by the fountain? Or as my daughter always tells me, don't be creepy, mom. <laughs> Just be friendly, okay? Don't invite a teenager to come sit next to you. <laughs> So, so just say good morning. Um, invite them to church. Um, but that's one of the things that is, is coming up in these new ministries that are building, that are being revealed to us. The people who have come into um, this space as, um, as new members, uh, the, new, the new staff member bringing Alex on board, that was very much a Holy Spirit moment for both um, us and for Alex. But what has opened up in the Trinity Youth Corral is... He's an educator. He's linked into the OPS system. He knows um, how to invite kids into song and into faith. Um, we have teenagers that are present. We have lots of, um, of, of alums and lots of teachers. And every time I bring up Stan Standifer's name in any room, anywhere, anywhere they're like, oh, Coach Standifer, you know kids. You know how to change their lives if you know what Stan did. And that's what we can do. It's about relationship, it's about presence, and it's about welcome. And it's already going. We're already being um, introduced to that. We're already being asked into that. Um, and the mentoring program, I, we're, I'm waiting on working with um, Principal Kirksey up at Central so that we know how to be present to those kids safely and effectively. The music has already taken off. Um, and Alex has already been in touch with, with their directors and Kirksey, uh, Principal Kirksey is going to be sending us their flyers. So you'll see, here's how to go see music at Central High School. They are going to see, here's how do you go see free, high quality, uh, formal and informal music in our performances and everything. So that's already something that's happened. The other thing that's happened is we have been able to absorb um, one of the ministries that the Yates Center had. The Yates Center closed, and we've been able to absorb their citizenship classes. So refugees are not left behind. We have, well, Vern and Gail have solved that, but we gave them the space for it. Um, 
the, the DEO Wednesday lunches, I know some of us mourn the fact that they're not back in this space. Um, one of the visions was to have them in that beautiful unified space upstairs. But what we discovered is there was an unmet need. People who couldn't get to our uh, building, people who couldn't leave um, where they were in the safe space in the encampment that they had found. Um, we are now taking meals to them. And by getting to know them one-on-one, -on -one, we are also taking them tents, we're taking them boots, we're taking them the immediate needs that they have. And some of these folks will not go indoors. Some of these folks, for whatever circumstances, they are, have unmet needs because they don't do social gatherings. So we are gonna keep that up because nobody else is doing it. Another thing that, um, has already started. There's another. I have notes. I have notes. Um, oh, Victory Arms. Um, our outreach to uh, the veterans there, um, delivering eggs to those folks, taking um, taking worship to those folks, creating some relationship, creating some hope there. They are downtown. We are hoping that with the hymn sing that we did on July 4th, with having um, uh, an opening our church, having that flag continue to uh, make sure that it's flown appropriately and beautifully, we can say, veterans, we welcome you. We see you, and we want you as a human being to come into our space and be loved by us. So there's a lot of things that are already bubbling, they're already happening, and that's because you are faithful. And that's because whatever the building is, you are already using it. We're overcoming some of the things that need to get fixed. And we will keep going. And we will keep going in line with where the Holy Spirit is leading us. And we will renew ourselves and we will renew this building so it continues to be that place of hope. So can you kind of also talk about what you're going to specifically want to cover in those meetings like what's the feedback you're looking or you know what's the input you want to give and what's the input what you need so what I want to give is um, the input that we want to bring to you are some of the strategies of solving accessibility because that is primary that's the first thing that we need to do the building is useless if you can't get into it and you can't move all the way through it so we're gonna start there in terms of what um, is physically possible um, and and AO is already working on some ideas some sketch ideas that we would be able to share with them and then the feedback I'm interested in is how are the spaces being used what are you what are you hoping that the space can be used for um, and that's so those are the two things but I'm really it's really important to me that you can be on your feet in some way and move through the different parts of the building and imagine how those can be utilized for what we're doing now. Okay? Let's end with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. See you next Sunday for the block party. Yeah. Woo!